Hello dear learners, I am Parag Dr. from Krishnakanta Hindi State Open University. I would like to welcome you all to my online class on introduction of economics which is included in first semester paper on introduction of economic theory 1. So in this class we will discuss about the definition of economics, next the nature and scope of economics, next the concept of stock and flow, and then scope of micro and macroeconomics. The definition of economics was given by several economics at several time and Adam Smith was considered as one of the pioneer among them. Adam Smith in his book, The Wealth of Nation, which was published in 1776, he defined economics as a study of wealth. So, according to Adam Smith, the discipline of economics should study how to acquire wealth, how to distribute wealth. But the definition as given by Adam Smith was severely criticized due to its inherent limitations. First, according to the economist, that Adam Smith gives more importance on wealth, ignoring the another important aspect that is welfare. And Adam Smith ignores a very important issue in economics that is scarcity of resources. So as a result, uh, Alfred Marcel, that's another famous economist, he in his book uh, principle of economics which was published in 1890 he defined economics as economics examines that part of social and individual action which is most closely connected with the attainment and with the use of material requisite of well-being thus it is on the one side a study of wealth and on the other and more important side a part of the study of man that means in the Alfred Marshall definition he includes both wealth as well as study of men. So as a result, Alfred Marshall definition was con considered to be comparatively superior than the definition given by Adam Smith. But, Adam, but Alfred Marshall also ignores a very important aspect that is, you know, the scarcity of sources and all the resources have alternatives. Then another famous economist that is Lionel Robbins gave the definition of economics as economics is a science which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses. Now if you analyze the definition as given by Lionel Robbins, it basically gives importance on three aspects. At first Lionel Robbins stress on the fact that human wants are unlimited. As all of you know that human wants are unlimited, but the resources to satisfy those wants are limited. So as a result, economics should study how to allocate our resources in such a way that we can meet our, our unlimited wants with our limited resources in the best possible manner. But Adam Smith definition also, you know, criticized by several economists and later the another definition was given by uh, Paul A. Samuelson. So Samuelson defined economics as economics is the study of how men and society choose with or without the use of money to employ scarce productive resource which could have alternative uses to produce various commodities over time and distribute them for consumption now and in the future among various people and group of society. So these are basically the definition given by various economists at various time. So next we will study about nature and scope of economics. Now if you see uh, the nature of economics as we have already discussed, 
that economics will include wealth, welfare, then distribution of wealth, all those issues will be discussed in economics. And the scope of economics is very wide. So the, since scope of economics is very wide, it is very necessary that we should divide the subjects into some approaches. Say that scope of economics can be broadly categorized into two categories that is uh, microeconomics and macroeconomics. Scope of economics can be again categorized as positive economics and normative economics. In case of positive economics, we will study economics as it is. We will not put any kind of value judgment. But in case of normative economics, along with study of wealth, welfare, we have to put some value judgment. That means what it should be, what should be the ideal distribution of resources. Next, if you see the, the subject of economics, it is, it is basically economics is a concept of choice as an economic problem. In economics, as I have already told you, since we have limited resources and we have unlimited ones, so we have to make a choice. That means where to distribute our resources in such a way that we can attain maximum satisfaction out of our limited resources. Next, another important concept. Uh, which is frequently used in economics is that stock and flow variables. Now, if you study any variable at a point of time, that means that is a concept of stock. Now, if you study any economic variable over a period of time, then this is known as a flow concept. So, let me give you a very simple example. Suppose if you are talking about money supply in an economy. So whenever you are explain money supply in economy, it always relates at a point of time. So that is why money supply is a stock concept. Now, if you see the national income, whenever you are talking about national income, we are talking about national income over a period of time, say for a year. So that is those kind of variables are called flow variables. Next, we will discuss about, you know, scope of micro and macroeconomics. Now, what is microeconomics? The name itself indicates that micro means small. That means in microeconomics, we will discuss about, but we usually discuss about individual unit, that is individual farm, individual consumer so we are not that means we are not concentrated on aggregate of those variables now what are the theory basically we study in microeconomics that is determination of prices of factors determination determination of prices of commodities under defined market situation next the welfare economics and determination of prices of factors of production. So those all issues are basically included in microeconomics. Next, what is macroeconomics? As I have already told you in case of microeconomics, in macroeconomics also the name indicates that macro means large. That means here we will discuss about the aggregate of those economic entities. That is aggregate of consumer, aggregate of productive resources. Now, what are the topics or you know issues we are going to study in macroeconomics? That is the theory of employment, the theory of inflation, the theory of national income, the theory of growth. That, so those all issues will be discussed in macroeconomics. So thus we have learned that in this class, thus we have learned that in economics we will study about what to produce, 
whom to produce how to distribute all those issues will be discussed in economics and economists will concentrate on how to distribute our resources in such a manner to attain the maximum satisfaction and broadly economics can be classified into you know two categories microeconomics and macroeconomics and you can also categorize economics in terms of positive economics and normative economics so this is all for today and i hope that from this class you got some idea about the basics issues of economics thank you